I finally replaced my M1 Mac Mini with the M4 base Mac Mini. So brand new setup, fresh out of the box, and I was hyped until reality sets in. And then you just realize for some people just how limited this is. Now for me, the base configuration is fine. 256 gigs of storage, barely any front facing ports, although more than the previous iteration of this, but no SD card slot and that power button on the bottom, which is divided opinion. Not ideal when you're trying to move fast, get creative and actually try and get stuff done. So with this, I need to hit the ground running quick. And I'm talking, I have access to external drives, SD cards for my drone and camera. So I need a clean setup and it's gonna be as minimalistic as possible. No visual adapters anywhere. And I didn't wanna spend weeks piercing it together or in fact paying Apple's premium for upgrades like increased storage. And that's why this Mac Mini Hub and stand from Mini Sapporo could be that essential accessory for those wanting the extra expandability from your Mac Mini. Now you'll notice straight away about this design, it literally looks like it's part of the Mac Mini. Same width, same finish, same footprint, and it just blends in. But it's hiding more than you'd expect, and that's a testament to the design team. So up front, you've got two USB-A 2.0 slots, which gives you back that USB-A slot now that the new Mac Mini has adopted the USB-C only approach. It's not as fast data transfer wise compared to USB-C, but at least it's there, particularly if you're using transmitters for keyboards or mice or even USB sticks. Now you're probably thinking, why is it 2.0 and not 3.0? Now this is a deliberate move by Mini Sapporo because they didn't want to add that 3.0 USB-A port, which may cause Wi-Fi interference with the Mac Mini, so they've just opted to stick with the 2.0 ports. Now there's also an SD card slot and a separate micro SD slot below that, right where you need them, just front and center. And as someone who's editing drone and camera content regularly, where there's a lot of data transfer involved, this is definitely a time-saving addition. Now just to note, the card reader supports UHS I speeds of up to 104 megabits per second, and not the faster UHS 2. So while it's perfect for standard 4K footage and most people's workflows. If you're working with really high bitrate or high frame rate media on UHS 2 cards, you won't get that full transfer speed here. But for my workload, it gets the job done and it's definitely fast enough for me. On the back, there's another USB-A port, a 3.5 millimeter audio port, most likely to be a redundant port on this hub for me, as there's an audio port more conveniently on the front of the Mac Mini itself for headphone use, which is much more convenient for me. But for users who use external speakers, then this Mac Mini iteration's move of that port from the back to the front, I'm guessing is gonna be very frustrating for those people. And in an attempt to keep your setup clean, so having this port return to the back with this hub will be ideal for you. Now the other ports are the HDMI port, which supports up to 4K at 60 Hertz. So if you're still getting that full resolution and refresh rate on your external displays without sacrificing performance and a USB-C port, and this is where you would connect the hub to your Mac mini. And that's the part that I really appreciate. There's no external power required. Unlike a lot of other bulky hubs that just need that separate power adapter just to function, this hub runs off that USB-C connection to the Mac mini. That's it, one cable, clean, simple, and efficient. Now here's where it gets really clever, and I'm seeing a lot of hubs like this do the same thing. There is space for an internal M2 SSD in here. So if you're like me and you went for that base Mac Mini and you wanna keep the cost down, this lets you add fast storage without Apple's upgrade prices and having to purchase external storage drives that you've just gotta plug into this and have separately to this as well. So if you wanna keep it sort of as minimalistic as possible, then you just put that SSD inside here and then you're done. So for most people, that option would be good. For me, who does use external hard drives, I'm probably gonna be sticking to that. So I'm not really fussed about having that other external cable. And you do need to purchase an SSD with this. It doesn't, unfortunately doesn't come with one, but once you do, you pop it in and there you go, extra space and you get to have that clean, uncluttered setup with no unnecessary dangling drives or cables. As 
And as you know, that weird quirk that Apple added, putting the power button of the Mac Mini on the bottom, which most people seem to have either a positive or negative opinion on. Well, this hub actually caters for that too. There is a smart little cutout built right into the stand. So you can see with the power on, you can just, it's so easy just to turn it on. No flipping over, no awkwardly having to reach underneath the Mac Mini. You can just, it, it's quite easy just to do it. Yes, it's a small thing, but it's details like that that make the big difference when you're using a machine every day and you're a user that switches their Mac Mini off after use. So useful for some, others who leave it on, not so useful, but it is a nice quirk to have. It hasn't just added more ports and storage for me, it's definitely completed the setup. No more extra power bricks, no tangled mess, just one USB cable from the hub to the Mac Mini, and now you've got a super functional base that looks like it was made for the Mac Mini. And you can't deny that this doesn't look like it was made for either the M4 or the M4 Pro Mac Mini. It's usable for what I need without overcomplicating things because I can do it all with this hub. It's clean, it's fast, and it gives you that kind of flexibility that you usually get from way more expensive setups without stepping outside the footprint or design of what you've already got with the Mac Mini. Now, if you've got the Mac Mini, especially the base model, but this isn't confined to just the base model, but I would recommend checking this out, especially if you're in a similar situation to me, because this hub is such a smart first upgrade for this amazing device. Many thanks to Mini Support Poro for providing this hub for me to test and review and if you want to check it out the link is in the description below. If you enjoyed this video press the like button and subscribe to the channel for more videos like this. Thanks for watching and I'll see you in the next one.